there's a lot going on with the economy under the surface right now. I uh, Just after Fed Day, for example, we saw a huge spike up in the reverse repo from uh, about half a trillion, which was a massive number um, before uh, Fed Day, and to now sitting around three quarters of a trillion dollars. And uh, I've been trying to do a lot more um, research and, and thinking about about what exactly that means, because the, the reverse repo question is something that I've struggled with this year. And I'm not ready to cover that yet. I hope I will be tomorrow. Um, I've got a lot more reading and listening that I have to do on that topic. So stay tuned for that. But for today, there's something from uh, two days ago or three days ago, maybe now, June 15th, there was a very good article that I read about um, the benefits cliff that is coming in September, I believe. It was uh, right around Labor Day. And something that I've been saying on this channel is that um, the the debate over inflation versus deflation, rather not deflation, but disinflation, slowing inflation, the idea of whether or not inflation will be transitory or sustained over a longer period, uh, whether or not we are witnessing, you know, right now sort of the peak of inflation or just sort of the beginning of um, of a greater rise in inflation that will last, you know, not in perpetuity, but at least in the medium term until something changes. And I've been arguing more on the side that I believe that inflation will be sustained. And that belief is predicated on the idea that the, uh, the benefits regime ushered in by the CARES Act uh, back in 2020, the enhanced unemployment benefits, uh, which are incentivizing so many millions of Americans to stay home and to not go to work, uh, the, uh, I guess you'd call them, you know, the 8 million people who had a job before March of 2020 who are now sitting at home despite, you know, the, I think, over 10 million job openings last I checked. And so very simply, you have less people working, but they, but their income has been replaced or in fact supplemented. They're making as much or more as they were before. And so they have lots of money to spend, yet they are contributing nothing to the economy. And so they are essentially sucking up resources um, and thus driving up prices because we are seeing uh, supply fall against demand. Demand in terms of, you know, in terms of dollars has remained in the economy. Consumption is still high, but supply is what's taken a hit. That's my general thesis as behind why I think that, you know, inflation is happening now and why it will continue. However, that obviously is only going to continue for as long as these benefits last. Um, and the people who have been promoting the idea that inflation is transitory say that, well, these, these benefits all have a sunset in them. They're all going to end at some point. And when that happens, boy, uh, <laughs> look out below. And it's not just the unemployment benefits, I believe. Um, there's also mortgage forbearance and uh, the eviction ban, which uh, the eviction ban is only on, at this point, I believe, only on... Uh, federally backed loans, so that's sort of a subset of the rental market. But forbearance is huge because, you know, mortgage forbearance, because there's a massive um, uh, portion of the mortgage market that is federally backed and would be subject to, uh, to forbearance. And so I take the position that, you know, there's, there's nothing so permanent as a temporary government program. I have trouble, especially, you know, with, you know, Democrats control both as the Congress and Republicans even um, are not the types who uh, want to be so tight on fiscal policy. The Republicans used to talk a big game, but then still run massive budget deficits. Nowadays, they don't even talk a good game. They just happily run massive budget deficits. And nobody wants to be uh, you know, the Ebenezer Scrooge who takes away the cookie jar from all the kids, who takes away the punch bowl, uh, particularly away from, you know, the unemployed people. But there's an article in uh, Real Clear Policy uh, that came out on June 15th, which makes the case that uh, this benefits cliff, we're going to, you know, come cr 
crashing or careening off over this cliff and benefits are going to expire and that he doesn't think that there's really any chance that, uh, by now that Congress is going to extend these benefits and that essentially uh, we're going to go back to a pre-March 2021 kind of welfare regime in this country. So I want to uh, credit the author, Matt Weidinger, I think that's how you say it, or when, some kind of German-Jewish-looking type name. I can't exactly pronounce it. I think it's Weidinger, though, so forgive me if that's wrong. I'm sure he'll never hear this. But he points out that there are, um, of course, as we know, about 25 states at this point who are choosing on their own to stop offering uh, the expanded unemployment benefits to their citizens because they feel like it is uh, retarding the recovery in the labor market, that it is keeping people at home rather uh, than, uh, inc than just helping people who can't find jobs. It is incentivizing people not to work, which, you know, hey, congratulations, you've discovered basic economics. Um, you know, if you tax something, you get less of it. If you subsidize it, you get more of it. If you subsidize unemployment, you're going to end up with more unemployed people than you otherwise would. You know, congratulations. Well, something that I hadn't thought about is that, well, these, you know, these Republican states that are getting rid of these unemployment benefits, they have representation in the Senate. They've got 39 senators um, just from those 25 states alone, apparently. There are 39 Republican senators who, um, in all likelihood, would share the same position as their governors on this issue, meaning that these senators, why would they support extending these benefits for um, uh, for the expanded unemployment if people in their own state, their own constituents, uh, are not going to get any of these benefits? If they vote to extend these, it would only be for people in the 25 other states. And I believe budget reconciliation is already used once. Uh, this year, and I think that that's all you can get by with it, although I should have double-checked that, but I'm fr fairly certain that they are not going to be able to use budget reconciliation to extend these benefits, uh, and that they will need 60 votes, um, but if you lose 39 of them already, because, you know, just being from the, the, the automatic um, no votes of Republican senators from states that are not receiving these benefits and thus would not want to vote to extend them for the other states to have their taxpayers subsidize the expanded unemployment benefits um, for these other states. And then you've got conservatives from other states, too, who would go along with the 39 uh, from these 25 states. And so I think he makes a decent case as to why these benefits will not be extended further. And if that is the case, Oh, well, then the, the consumption in this economy that we've witnessed that has not taken a dip over the past year um, may very well begin to wane. And if that happens, um, well, actually, that can, that can lead to, to, to really two paths, both of which would not push me in the direction of saying that I think that the inflation is going to continue at its current pace. One is that people don't get these unemployment benefits and they simply can't consume as much because they now they're, they don't have the same high unemployment benefits that they did before. They've got less money coming in and so they can't just go out and buy things. And so that uh, would reduce the level of inflation. Now, the other thing that might happen is these people will say, well, gee, I'm not getting so much in unemployment now. This sucks. I'm going to go get a job. And then they work to earn their money. And because they are working to earn a living, uh, their consumption is not going to be inflationary. Consumption is only inflationary when you're just printing money out of thin air. But when you work to produce something in the economy, you're creating value and you're only going to consume as much as you produce. And so that is not going to create inflation. But if that doesn't happen, if all these people don't just flood back into the labor market and go and get jobs, if we do see um, something similar to what we saw this last time around back in the 2008 crash when the labor force participation rate took a hit and then never recovered, even though the unemployment rate came back down, uh, what you saw was a permanent migration 
of people out of the labor force. And so those were less people who were working to produce things in the economy. And so we might be looking at a choice here of either we have inflation and uh, nominally, you know, sustained economic activity, or uh, we see um, inflation die down because the Fed is not printing money and pumping it directly into uh, the real economy, and we see the air start to come out of the bubble. Because remember, what all of this unemployment is, is um, a very potent uh, transmission channel for the Fed's monetary policy. They're able to print money and put it directly into people's pockets. It's essentially people's QE. You know, we already got that bad retail sales number, I think it was last week. Uh, and that, I think, was pretty clearly a result of the lack of new stimmies coming from the federal government. And so I think the choice has been pretty clear for a while. Either they keep the spigot going, the stimmy spigot, and we deal with the inflation, uh, which is not fun. It's not something that I favor, but it's something that I thought was probably what the, what the authorities favored. Or you turn off the spigot and we enter a much needed recession. Now, of course, if it does look like we're beginning to enter recession, all of this will be reversed. You will see Congress come back and give out lots of new stimmies, and you will see the Fed double or triple down on whatever it is that they plan on doing. Um, but depending on how long they let this go, as fragile as things are, you don't know when they will have waited too late. So again, I, I'm not going to be too definitive here. I don't think I have anything definitive to say, but this is more uh, data to consider. Um, I will post a link to the article in the description if you want to read it. I think that it's pretty straightforward. And as I keep saying, a lot of these questions are going to be answered in the fall. Um, this expiration of benefits uh, is set for, uh, like I said, September. And so if September comes and goes and the benefits end, we'll see what the results of that are. So with that said, I guess I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.